think of gases, it's easy for me to think of a balloon. The balloon itself isn't a gas, it's rubber. But inside the balloon are gas molecules. The air we breathe is made of different gas molecules, mostly nitrogen and oxygen. But there are some trace amounts of other chemicals, like carbon dioxide. These gases don't just sit around. Gases are very energetic, and they bounce around like crazy. Gases have a lot of kinetic energy. And kinetic means motion, so gases move a lot. According to kinetic theory, all matter is made of tiny particles that are in constant motion, even solids and liquids, but gases move the most. It's simple enough, but there are some assumptions that are made. With gases and the kinetic theory, these few assumptions need to be understood. First, the particles of a gas are treated as hard, perfect spheres with insignificant volumes. This means that between the particles of a gas, there will be lots and lots of empty space. These particles are also moving in constant, random, and rapid straight-line paths. They only change their direction when they collide with an object or particle. And the third assumption is that all collisions between particles in a gas are perfectly elastic, meaning no energy is lost. It's merely transferred during a collision. Let's apply this to the balloon. The molecules bounce into each other without reacting in elastic collisions. The particles also bounce against the walls of the balloon, which exerts a pressure on the sides of the balloon. The air on the outside of the balloon also exerts pressure on the balloon, and we call that atmospheric pressure. Gas pressure results from the force exerted by a gas per unit of surface area on an object. But if there are no particles of a gas, there can be no pressure. In this case, we've got a vacuum. A vacuum is an empty space with no particles and no pressure. Pressure that results from collisions of atoms and molecules in the air with objects is called atmospheric pressure, and it occurs in all directions. We can measure atmospheric pressure using a barometer. This particular type is filled with mercury. Don't drink it or breathe it. It's actually really dangerous. So why use it? Well, mercury is the densest room temperature liquid, which makes it possible for the barometer to be less than one meter high. If it were made with water, it would need to be over 11 meters high, which is about 34 feet, and it's also really inconvenient. So a mercury barometer can be much smaller, about 30 inches high. At the top of the barometer is a vacuum, and the atmospheric pressure, all the atmosphere from Earth's crust to space, is pressing down on the liquid in the basin. When the atmospheric pressure rises, the mercury adjusts to the increasing pressure by moving up the tube. This creates equilibrium between the internal and external pressures. When the atmospheric pressure decreases, the mercury level drops to maintain equal pressure. This kind of barometer is read in millimeters of mercury because it measures the change in height of mercury inside the barometer. But this isn't the only measure of pressure. No, that would be too easy. In addition to millimeters of mercury, there are pascals which are actually usually measured in kilopascals and are the SI unit of pressure. There are atmospheres, or ATM, where one atmosphere is standard. And lastly, the TOR, which is basically just another name for millimeters of mercury, so go ahead and forget about it. Now you can convert between the different units very easily. You just have to know what the standard pressure is for each of them. So at STP, millimeters of mercury is 760, you need 101.3 kilopascals and one atmosphere. So to convert between each of them, we need to use a little bit of dimensional analysis and let's just try something. Let's say you had a pressure of 825 millimeters of mercury, but you need the units in kilopascals. Start with what you're given and put kilopascals as your answer units. Knowing that there are 101.3 kilopascals, millimeters of mercury is 760, you can set up a conversion factor. Cancel your units, do the math, and you get 110 kilopascals. Pretty easy. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.